Okay, today we're going to discuss putting it all together on our cards, how to create, uh, now that we've done a bunch of um, motifs and we've done some uh, watercolor paintings, this is the loose floral from last week. Um, how do we put it all together and how do we mount the cards? So let's get it going. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to wait for everybody to join because then they can always come back and see the video. So what we're going to do is talk about how to frame out and cut out and mount our cards. Whether you have a card that opens the traditional way or this way, you know, depending on how you turn it, or if you have a card that you cut and score the opposite way, so it's more like a elongated card, or this way. If you have an orientation in mind, then make sure that card surface you're working on, like if you want a card like this, when you open it up, you're going to be doing your mount on the right side. So when you close it, it would look like that. Um, so what I like to do is not cut my mount to the exact edge because sometimes it just mm. it's just bulky and awkward, especially if it's not super flush and super tacked down. I think a nice white border around the edge makes, uh, you know, it just gives it a framing, so to speak. So what I've done is I, I cut out a viewfinder, which I've used in our previous, previous classes, that is, should be four and a quarter by five and a half, but a little smaller. Yeah, this is four by five and a quarter because I want that little bit of, uh, you know, eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch all the way around. So last week, I, you know, we, I showed you how to do some loose florals. And if you have a painting that where you want to frame out, like, how, I, how do I want to, what do I want in my picture? Do I want the top of that? Do I want it this way? Do I want it that way? So that's why I use my viewfinder to help me figure out the composition I want in my, so I think I'm going to go with that. So what I do, I hold down my viewfinder and I just take a pencil and I just lightly trace around. I'm going to lay it flat. Let me put it so you can see me. I'm going to, and now take my pencil and go right around the inside of that box. And I can get two cards out of this piece of paper, which I think was originally six by nine. So I'm going to trace out two rectangles. I know my pencil lines are a little faint. Now you can get you can use a pair of scissors, but scissors, sometimes it's hard to get a straight line. So many paper crafters use a, um, this is made by Fiskars. They make a lot of different styles of these paper cutters. You sell that? Pardon me? Fiskars? Fiskars, F-I-S-K-A-R. S, this, this Thank you. Stars. And you can get it on Amazon um, or at Michael's. Michael's carries these as well. And it might have a little thing that folds out. So if you're cutting a large piece of paper and then it folds in, I believe this one has it also. It has an arm. So if you, and a lot of them have the metric, it has the inches. And it, well, this one also has like four and a quarter, five and a half. So it gives you little blocks for 
common sizes. So what I'm going to do, because this is a, this is on a rail. This is a, a really sharp, like the tip of an, an exacto knife and it, it rolls. So I'm going to line up my edge where I want to cut and just slide it. And it makes a nice crisp edge. So this one I'm going to do, I'm just going to follow my um, pencil line and I want the blade on the inside of the pencil line. So it's trimming away my pencil line, even though it's a little faint, I don't want any pencil line um, to show. So on this one, I'm just going to be doing the full size with this um, rotary blade. I guess they call it a rotary. And some they make these things for quilters too, for people who are going to um, cut fabric to make quilts. And you can even save your scraps if you want. But this, see, makes a nice, crisp, rectangle where if you're using scissors sometimes you might not get that really straight edge which you can always use a metal ruler and an exacto knife to get that nice straight edge but use a cutting mat i also want to share with you you can i have all kinds of scissors in my scissor bucket and scissors. Excuse me again. What did you call that that gizmo from Fiskers? Fiskers a cutting a rotary cutter. A, I I think it's called a rotary cutter. Or um yeah, I'm pretty sure. Does it have a name on it on the back? Patent pending. Uh, what is this? It just says Fiskers. It's okay. a paper cutter, but instead of the old guillotine um, paper cutters, mm. this is has got a slide. And if I, well, this one doesn't flip up, but this one flips up. And if I were to touch my finger on that blade, it's like a diamond tip. It's very sharp. That'll that'll make you bleed. So they sell these at Michaels as well. So you don't have to have a straight edge on your mm. card. You can use, they make all kinds of scissors with decorative edges, but these are painting shears. Mm -hmm. And this may, these are, you know, from old school um, sewing. These are heavy. I can make a zigzag edge by going around <laughs> That is with the pinking shears and it makes that zigzag edge. So now your edges don't always have to be square. I mean, or straight. You can, they make, I'm just gonna finish this with the pinking and then go show you the other choices that you can get in scissors. They make, a lot of scissors that have decorative blades like scallop, just not, you know, the pinking. I like these pinking shears because they're metal. See, and it makes that kind of fun edge. They also make scissors that have, this is called deckle edge. And it makes, it gives the affectation of a ripped edge. So let me cut it with, see, the only thing I don't like about these scissors is they're plastic and they're not that strong. But see, that's the deckel edge. It looks like you ripped the paper. Mm -hmm. They also, and then this, there's so many ones you can get that have um, like a, a wave pattern and it will tell you It'll show you um, the pattern it makes. And there's some that it, I'm looking for the, oh, this one. This is like a filigree. Now on some of these, on most of these, let me get a piece of paper. 
where you can see what I'm doing. On most of these, you have to line it up. So if I just, you know, cut willy nilly like that, it might not all line up all my filigree edges. So I want to just make sure that when I go back and really think about it, I'm lining up the hills and valleys. So, see, and it has that kind of like fill of the edge. So it's you know, ornate. So you can get all kinds of ornate. Um, this is called colonial. That's the colonial um, blade. But again, sometimes if you're going through thick paper with these plastic scissors, they don't want, they don't have the heft. Where my pinking shears, the sewing scissors, they're nice and heavy. So now that I've got, I've got a square front, I mean a rectangle front with a straight edge and a rectangle front with a pinked edge, I could lay that down and just mount it on like that with a pinked edge. That, that kind of looks cute. So let's take it a moment to talk about adhesives. Now, let me grab the, and, like, oh, here they are. Okay, because I do a lot of collages and paper crafting, I have one of these tape guns. This is like in wow. industrial. This is what sometimes the frame shops, when you go to get something framed, they use these big tape guns. And what this dispenses is a ribbon or a line of double stick tape. So it'd be like uh, if I was using a glue stick and you can use a glue stick. The best glue stick because most of the glue sticks like Crayola or Staples brand, they're temporary. Your, your item will have been fall off. Um, a good Uhu, is that how you say it? Uhu, U-H-U, glue stick. This is nice and it's got powerful stick on so you might consider that as well. But they, and they also, if you don't want to invest in one of these guns, is they make the small tape rollers like this. Mm -hmm. It does the same job. And it's got a little cartridge of double stick tape in it. And let me show you how I do this. I just put on the flip side, this is, this is a, a painting that I, you know, I did. This is my icky side. This is my good side. So on the icky side, the, the face down, I'm just going to pull the trigger and run my ribbon of double stick tape around the perimeter and then a thing through the middle. You can't really see it. Well, maybe a little. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so yeah. now you can see that it's got double stick tape and I'm going to line it up and... This one. push it down on my card and now it's affixed and I've got a card with a panel on the front if I have a smaller if I want to jazz this up let's say and or I my rectangle is smaller let me cut this down to show you how you can do a double mount to bring out your painting. Let's say that your painting is smaller than, um, you know, like four by five and a quarter. And you wanna give it an extra bump. They make all, all kinds of these um, paper pads. And I have them in all kinds of um, colors. And these are good for a little background so I might say you know what I want a double mount on here well it would and contrast contrast is what I'm always looking for that is one of the um hmm. one of the major no matter what you're doing in art 
if you have contrast and what I mean by that is the drama that is created between darks and lights and where complementary colors collide. Complementary colors collide, how's that for alliteration? Um, I might want to use this because the, uh, the opposite color on the color wheel of orange is blue. So blue and orange make a powerful combo together. So I'm just gonna rip out this piece of paper. And this is the one that I want to have to be the four by five and a quarter because I'm just gonna frame that out again. So just to show you a, a variation, do I wanna use this darker? Oh, maybe I'll use this one. This is even brighter. That's even brighter. So this one, I want this to measure my four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to line it up with my cutter thing. And that goes right to four, I believe. Three, four, five. What did I say that was? Five and a quarter? So... If our card is five and a half and you want to have a nice frame and then cut it at five and a quarter. And now we're going to go to, I think this is the fourth, this is the edge. And you'll know when you put it on your card. Yeah, I got to cut another eighth of an inch off. And there is some, you know, sometimes there is some math involved, some uh, figuring out and you can always put little tick marks on the back of your paper if you're not sure. So, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I've got this floral that I want to mount onto another piece of paper. But I'm going to share with you a tip. Also, let me just grab the marker. Sometimes when I do mounts, it bothers me when the white edge of the inside of the paper shows, especially if I'm doing a collage. So what I like to do is mm. take the marker. You could do it with a paintbrush. I'm just gonna color the edge of the paper. I'm just, see the difference? where the pink is on the edge and the white is. You, many people might not notice it, but you know, that's one of my artist quirks is I don't like that white edge. I wanna go around the edge with a, this is a brush marker, but I'm not, I'm using the side of it. I'm not using the tip of it. I'm rolling this, rolling it along the side to get rid of that white edge. It just gives it a more finished look, more polished look. You know, maybe sometimes you've received um, invitations that are on a heavy cardstock and they might have a colored edge. It just, it just looks more finished to me. Mm. So now I'm going to mount that on using my tape roller. I'm going to mount my floral onto my accent paper. And I've got this. So now I've got, that's framed again. And again, I'm going to take, because this is hot pink, I'm going to go around my edge with the coordinating marker because I don't want that raw white inner core of the paper showing. Now I'm going to fix it to the front. Now, remember before when I did this one, I just ran the, the glue tape around. But if you are going to affix, um, let's say a message. Okay, I did have it. Where's my- That's kind of cute. 
kind of. I may have sent you, I think the one, the people, not everybody sent me their address and that's fine. You don't have to, but you may have gotten some of these little things in there. Yeah. Like this one says best wishes. So it's got a little rivet, a little hole. So I'm sure I have in here. Oh yeah. Oh, there's that ribbon. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm just gonna take this as just a piece of um I put this fun yarn. Wow. You wow. use I mean, I have a sack full of sorry ribbon that, that's really fun to use too, but I'm it's too thick to go through that. And I don't, I want to get the demo done. Oh, you know, it's also cute now that it's also um, very au courant is the baker's twine. People, you see a lot of this baker's twine used as embellishment. So maybe I'll use that. I'm just going to see, I, I keep and keep, I have a whole wall full of my organized art supplies. I'm just going to cut off some of this baker's twine because this, this little hole, this little rivet, it begs to be qualified with some kind of ribbon or string or something. So I'm just going to double the twine with a loop and pull this through the loop like that. So I've got a little hanging thing. So if I want to attach this to my card, what I would do is attach it before I glue my base down and glue my panel down to my card front because I don't want to poke a hole and have you see that when you open the card. So what I want to do is maybe do, I want it to go this way. Maybe I want it to be horizontal. But it is a little small, but you know, you get, it's a little small on there. The best wishes gets a little small on there, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do it this way to show you. I might not want it to dangle all over the place. Maybe I'll just do a little tap of the glue stick on the back of the tag just to get it to stay put for a minute while I decide what I'm going to do about the back because I want it to be kind of like this, whether I do my card this way or that way. I, so what I wanna do is now before I glue this down to my base, I wanna take a piece of tape and position it on the back of this to keep the string in place. So where's my tape? I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and glue my string to the back side of the panel. So now when I glue my panel down to the card, it's all nice and neat and tidy. So now I have to decide, do I want the card to open this way? Or do I want the card to open this way? And I think I don't want it this way because you're gonna turn the card to read the best wishes anyway. So always check your orientation before you glue your card down to make sure it's not upside down. So again, I'm gonna take out my roller thing. And if you have double stick tape or 
If you don't have double stick tape, I guess you could take a piece of tape and double it back on itself, you know, like make a loop, make a circle of tape, and now it will become like double stick tape. But th then you're using a lot of tape. <laughs> you're using twice as much tape as you need to. So now I'm just going to glue this down on here like that. And now I have my card. And oh, the, so the line is hidden so you can write. And I, let me also share another hack with you, what I do. I just made a whole bunch of Thanksgiving cards for my family. And because they they don't live around here, I won't see them uh, on Thursday. So before I glue my panel down, I write my sentiment on the inside of my card. And then if, if everything is spelled right and it looks good, then I glue my panel down. Because how many times have I made a beautiful card in my life and I do write, you know, happy anniversary and I spell anniversary wrong. So if that happens to you, all you have to do is cut your panel off and glue it down onto, onto a fresh card. However, now your card's getting really thick because you've got extra layers on there. If the post office cannot get your, your envelope through their little um, width, and it's an eighth of an inch, if it's more than an eighth of an inch, they're gonna charge you more money to mail it. So you want to keep your dimensions and they have to be able to bend it. The post office has gotten so fussy. Well, because over the course of time, people create elaborate cards and glue things onto them where that are so rigid that they, they started getting really strict about postal regulations. And this kind of annoys me because the glue stick is um, not keeping this in position. So I'm just gonna take a little extra heavier, like the glue tape and add a little bit of that to the back of the best wishes tag and get that to stick in position so it's not flying all over the place. I also have another, oh, this one, this card also has a tag. And this again, this is a slightly larger tag where I, oh, um, it's a red card. So, and, and here I stamped and did foil embossing on this card. But this is a white tag. And I did the little green um, painting of some greenery. And then I did the light um, smudging around the edges of the tag before I attach the tag to the card. So that's attaching a tag. Um, what we also can do, remember last week we did some of these tree demos. Now you might have a piece of a, a painting where you don't love the whole painting and you just might wanna use a section of it. So what you could do is build a card by using the section that you want. So do I want to cut this? Maybe I want to cut this with the, the jagged edge, the, um, what do I call that? Painting shears. Oh, the, oh, the painting shear, but the, this one's a decal. The decal is the one that looks like the ripped paper. So I'm just going to go around this tree and I'm not going to make it symmetrical because the tree is not. I'm just going to follow around the outline of this tree with the decal edge scissor. Because that's the only piece in the painting I liked. Was tree. So I gonna, I'm going to isolate that tree. And now I can put that tree on 
on a bright ground. So again, the opposite of green on the color wheel is red. So to really make it pop, um, I but I don't love that the way it is. Something about it annoys me, but I'm, I'm looking for a way because I want to bring in, I want to do a segue um, to talk about decorative tapes. Now, the only kind of tape I talked about so far was the adhesive tape, but they also mm. make decorative paper wow. tapes called washi tape. Right. And washi tape is a paper tape that <laughs> you can buy in rolls. And this they have at Michael's, or I know that. And it is a paper tape. So it is not super sticky. It, it, it can be repositionable. So what I might want to do. If I'm using a washi tape and I want it to stay put, let me see if I'm going to find this. I'm going to do a, a runner of glue where on the paper where I'm going to use the washi. Because the washi might pull up over time. It is just a paper tape. It's low tack. So what I might want to do to reinforce it is to take a glue stick or to use my tape runner gun and just do a line where I want to put my washi and then lay down the tape. And I always, I always cut more than I need. Mm. So That's I can trim point. to the edge. I don't want to have to measure out like a, you know, four and a quarter piece of tape, just go right over, go past the edge mm -hmm. and then trim off your excess. Look at my little card. That's cute. I like it. I oh, like it. Good. So now I might, it adds another element to that. It kind of grounds my tree a little bit. Now, if I want my tree to stand off the page, and what, I, what I'm going to do now, because this paper, this base is just a, um, it's just a painted paper, an imported paper from India. I'm going to glue my mount down now, because the, the only thing I'm going to add to this is my tree, but it's, it was too flimsy for me to work on this, so I need a firmer base. I'm going to glue this down. And I'm seeing now, because I, you know, I got this artist eye and sometimes it drives me nuts. I need to trim about a 16th to an eighth of an inch off of this edge. So it'll be equidistant all the way around the card. Oh no. Okay. The paper trimmer, because this is a cotton paper. It chewed this up. <laughs> so this lends me to think, how am I going to rescue this? Um, okay. Let's move on to a different piece of paper because it I don't want I don't want to deal with this right now. Well, you know what? I could cut it down even more, but that's what I'll do. I'll cut it down even more, but I'm not gonna use the paper trimmer because this paper is too soft and it's got a lot of cotton fiber. I am going to hand cut it and not use the rotary. I'm gonna trim it down a little more, use my metal roller, nothing like ad living here on the spot. Okay, now that makes a nice, nice clean cut but i need to take it down maybe right to the edge of those gold dots okay but i'm going to have to do something around the side maybe i'll do oh i know i'll do more gold dots i'll do gold dots on this side okay i'm going to glue this down now and it will be 
it will be, um, it will have a little extra along this side. Yes, yeah, sometimes these cotton, heavy cotton fiber papers that are imported from India, they can be fussy. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this down. And now when I'm done, see how it's wider on the sides and it is on the top. I think when I'm done, I'm gonna do a row of gold dots down there. But the point I wanted to make was if I want my tree to stand out or stand off the page, they make these like glue dot things. And I just hear that. I have in this bag, they, they're glue dots. They can be three dimensional and they make glue squares or as well. Okay, here's, here's the ones I wanna show you. Okay. They come on, you can see most of these are used but I have a couple more left, perfect. They have a plastic side to them, a plastic wrap on each side. And it's a double stick foam, like a little foam. So I'm gonna put one here on the tip of my tree. I'm gonna punch out another one and they come in different diameters. They come in squares, they come in circles. And I even save the core because I, I don't waste anything. I just <laughs> use the core as well. And I'm gonna put one down here. And now I'm going to line it up where I want it on the card, maybe right about there. And you can see how it rises off the page. And if you turn it, you'll see that it's got dimension. And if you really look, you'll see the little foamies underneath, but it get, does give it a raised dimension, a three-dimensional look. Um, and now, remember I told you that I had to rescue that. Oh, I got these things all over the floor. I'm going to take a gold marker. All right, these are, I think I have these are metallics in here. Now, Sharpie makes a paint marker and it's different than a regular Sharpie that is mostly, um, well, no, that's gonna, that's gonna be too much. So you, they make all kinds of metallic markers. That one doesn't wanna work. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, this one might just do the job. And I'm just gonna hold this down so you can see me here. I'm just gonna go do a line of the dots. It's not as bright as gold as the other ones, which I may have wanted, but just to show you how you can recover from a boo-boo on your card by just band-aiding it and making up the area that you had to cut away by just adding an embellishment of a line of dots where I had to cut that paper away that got chewed up by the cutter. So now I've got a little 3D card. Now there are other things that you can use. If let's say you have a card like this where you've used a painting, if we had one that was much more subtle, because this one is really bright. But my point is, if you have embellishments, I have a bag of butterflies and I just had them. I start out so organized, I swear I do. Um, okay, here. This is uh, Tim Holtz makes a lot of uh, paper crafting things. And this is a whole bag of butterfly and dragonflies. But you can, and they're all cut out 
so you could take one of these if you decide, well, see, it's a little busy. It's too busy to put on this one. But if you have a, a less busy painting and you want to add something to it, you can glue to it. You can glue on top of your painting. You don't always have to have your painting um, be just blank, you know, you and you could also, okay, like we did last week, I was doing a lot of uh, loose florals and I did some just some strokes. So I'm going to take this off, off of the, um, the block, the watercolor block. And I want to do it carefully so I don't rip the painting like I started to in my haste. Okay, so I took this off the block. And let's say I just want to use a strip, but I want to add other stuff. Like and this a lot of loose florals. I could do the same thing with the viewfinder and make the card out of that, but I want to show you some alternatives. Let's say you have a, just an area that you want to, how am I doing for time? Okay, good. Um, you have a small area of a painting and you want to fill up the space on the card. You can introduce a contrasting paper or contrasting element because not everything has to be symmetrical. You could take a paper and use one of your paintings and make a decorative paint um, panel. Use the paper. Your painting doesn't have to be the star of the show. That's my point. So if I do this four by five and a half, or four by five and a quarter, my five and a quarter, not that good of an eyeballer. Um, five and a quarter, line that up. So, where's all my blank cards? Here's one. Okay, so this, I've got a little base going on there. But I also want to bring in maybe these shapes, but not all of them. So I might take a decorative scissor. Yeah, maybe a decorative scissor. And this one is like a mini pinking. Oh, that could be interesting. And I'm, I'm not going to do it straight. I'm just going to kind of go wonky around the shapes and see what happens. It might be a little long. Or I could turn it that way. No, I think I'm just going to cut this one off. You know, you're going to be eyeballing it all the way. Now, this, these techniques I'm showing you, I'm really making one card at a time. I also want to talk to you about making more than one card at a time. So if you have an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper, of decorative, like colored paper, you can cut that into quarters. And now you've got four bases for that. So now I've got this on here. Now this might be where I would bring in a butterfly or some kind of decorative element that because like, things that I don't like that one. Um, things arrangements in threes are very desirable in design. Um, odd numbers, if you've you know, ever had to work with a decorator or someone, they're going to encourage you to do, like if you have a, a table, put three items on a table. Um, I think I'm going to cut this down even more and see, and see what, don't jam on me. 
scissors. Don't jam on me. Sometimes they don't like this heavy watercolor paper. So then I could bring in a little butterfly like that. And maybe I put a ribbon here of washi tape. But my point being that you don't have to do a complete painting as the panel of your card. You can now come back in if on an extra piece of paper and write a sentiment. Are these both brush tips? No. You could write, um, let's, take, let's just take the word love. I'm just gonna write the word love on a piece of scrap paper and now I'm going to cut that off and where do I want to cut that there maybe just give it a snip there so now I could mount on top of my painting, if I, you could write happy birthday, you could put a little, um, you know, like a extra little floral accent there in the corner. But you, you can leave it blank, you know, just keep your painting there and write all your sentiments on the inside. Or what you can also do is take old greeting cards and cut out uh, from the panel where it says happy birthday or, um, you know, I love you or happy Valentine's Day or happy anniversary and cut out the sentiment from an old greeting card. And that also um, can be used. I know when we were kids, we would take the old Christmas cards and cut them up to make tags for our gifts for the next year. So cutting up old greeting cards is also a good plan. So what I might want to do with this is go around my edges again, because you know how I love to do that. Go around my edges so they're all pink, the matching pink ink, pink ink. And now I might want my card, my sentiment to rise off the paper. So I'm going to use the, um, the uh, glue dot thing, but I'm out of dots. So I'm actually using Oh, come on. I'm going to use the, what do they call that? The debris or the spots that the dots came out of. And I'm just going to use this to put the remnant and add this to my card. So now it says love and it rises off. You can see it's three dimensional. Now I've just got a, you know, a little card that has a sentiment on the front. Now what makes a card extra special in my eyes is when you get it with a lined envelope. And a way to line our envelopes, the watercolor paper to use your painting might be a little too thick. So if you've got a coordinating paper and there are, that one might be cute. Yeah, I don't like that. Oh, the plaid. I think the plaid might be, no, not the right colors. Um, that could be cute. Yeah, I'll use it. For an A2 envelope, it's very easy to make a liner because it's, is it five and a quarter? Is it five and a half by five and a half? I think it's a five and a half by five and a half inch square to make a liner for a square flap A2 envelope. I'm going to show you how to do a point flap 
and a square flap. Now, square flap is really easy because an A2, it's a five and a half inch square. So I just cut a five and a half inch square of my liner paper. What I'm going to use is my envelope liner. You lift up the flap of your, and this works on the square flap. Uh, you know what? Maybe it was five and a quarter. <laughs> five, five and a quarter. Well, the depth is okay. It's the width because you want to get in where, because the, the flap tapers, there you go. So you're going to insert your liner up to the glue line of your envelope and kind of center it there like that. There's my glue line up on top. So I'm coming in under the glue line. And now I'm going to take my uh, tape runner. I'm just gonna fold my envelope flap back. I'm gonna take my tape runner because I'm only gluing the top line of the envelope liner. I just ran a line of glue across the top now I'm going to flip this back up. Now I've got my lined envelope because you can only glue you can only glue the top of the envelope lining. You cannot glue it all the way down because when you fold it, the liner is going to shift slightly in the inside belly of the envelope. So if you have it all glued down and you go to fold it, it's going to make a nasty wrinkle up here. So you only need to secure it at the top. And now you have this really pretty envelope lining and it doesn't have to match. I like my colors to coordinate, but you can see how I've got the little scrolly lining working with the watercolor painting. It's got the pinks, it's got the greens, it's got some orange. So it's a coordinated lining. The watercolor paper would make a really thick lining. So um, I wouldn't suggest that. Now, if you have a pointed envelope like this, you're going to measure the width of your envelope. Um, okay, I'll use this as my ruler. So where the envelope, because the envelopes all taper, they all come in. So I want the measurement from here to here. So which is about a quarter of an inch less than the envelope size itself. So this is five and a half again. So I'm going to cut a piece of paper five and a quarter. And I'm going to use a contrast. I need like a dark paper to show you. This will work. So I'm going to cut my five and a quarter, I think I said. Yeah, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. So now that I can slip, I'm going to slip this five and a quarter into the envelope like this. I'm going to turn the envelope over this white paper. So I'm going to, um, I'll do it this way so you can see the contrast. I'll flip it around. So you see that this is sticking out. You're going to take a pencil or a marker or any kind of tool. And you're going to just follow that triangle like that. Just make a, a mark, you know, trace that triangle, retake this out. Now you're going to cut along that edge. You're going to trim, you're going to follow that point that you know that uh, triangle thing you just created when you traced it but you're going to cut it on the cut away your marked edge so you're going to cut on the inside of it so i'm cutting away any marks and i'm also going to cut about a half inch off the bottom so 
it has room to drop in the envelope. So now I'm going to take this, put this back in here. And there I go. I got my envelope lining for a pointed flap envelope. And once again, I'm just going to bring it up to the glue line, fold my envelope back so I can now glue the underside of my lining. We only glue the top, flip this up, and now I have a lined envelope for a pointed flap envelope. And it's really pretty when you get a lined envelope. It, it just adds that extra little uh, pizzazz to a card. And again, it does not have to match, does not have to match the card. Uh, you, if you have a watercolor card or a painting, you could use a solid color. Um, you know, you don't have to, it might not look great to have two different florals. On this, I might use a solid red orange or a solid blue or something to, to give it some pizzazz to just um, make it rise off the page. So again, we're going to review. We make our panel before we glue it down on the card. And you, you might, want to write your sentiment uh, before you glue your panel down. But then again, you could have a lot, make a lot of these blank cards to keep them in your stash. So you don't always have to run out to the store and spend five, six, seven dollars on a card. You can make a bunch of blank ones like this and then when the time comes, you can write, you know, happy birthday, Betty, or, do, you know, do a little happy birthday um, applique on the front that you could handwrite yourself, or you cut up an old um, greeting card. Uh, we talked about having tags and embellishments and other things you can use. You could even, um, if the person, let's say, is a stamp collector. You could always uh, bring in like a, you know, mount like a, a fun little foreign stamp on there just to reference their hobby. And be aware of the thickness of the envelope. Anything over an eighth of an inch, the post office, there's a surcharge. What I have been doing when I, because I never know how thick my envelopes are gonna be, or if I'm going to be using a square envelope. Square envelopes cost more to mail than um, a rectangular envelope. The postal system has all kinds of regulations. I'm looking for my stamp thing. Where are you? Here we go. I have been buying these stamps. Um, I don't, what is the denomination? The denomination is not printed on it, but it's, they're good for square envelopes and for envelopes that are slightly thicker. They might be like a 70 cents or something like that, but it will save you from having to use two stamps if you don't want to use two stamps. Everything I buy now is forever stamps, so they can't, um, you know, switch around the pricing on me, like when there's a fixed rate stamp. But um, yeah, these, whatever these are, blue butterflies, they work for extra thick envelopes and square envelopes. The last thing you want to have happen is to make a beautiful card and have the post office return it to you six months later saying, postage due or something like that. So if you are going to mail a card, make sure that um, you follow the postal guidelines or they will, will never receive it and you might never get it back either. So um, are there any questions about what we talked about today? I'll send an email with touching on the points that we covered. 
And I am recording this. So if you have any, uh, if you want to recap something or see how I did something, you can revisit that. Um, how much postage did you put on that? Oh, I just used one of the uh, butterfly stamps. So I forget what they are. It, I don't even know what the postage is up to now, 59 or 60 cents. It used to be 55, but everything now, I suggest buying a forever stamp because you never know when they're going to spring another postal uh, hike on you. So, and the price of the forever stamp will be good going forward, even if there is a postal hike. So, um, yeah. Oh, so that's, you know, that's something you could do too. Okay. Thank you so much for taking Thank this. Thank you. Class. I have enjoyed sharing these tips and tricks with you. In January, I'll be doing a three week class in uh, Paint Along With Me in Watercolors, where each week we'll be uh, achieving a painting in one hour. So that's a good uh, winter time way to kill a wintry afternoon. So thank you so much for your time and your interest. And I hope to see you all again in the future. Thank you. Bye.